Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Atia and this is The Bright Blooms where I'll be sharing some of my sewing inspiration and makes as well. So today I've got a lovely new magazine to share with you. This is Tauco magazine and it's issue seven. If you haven't come across the magazine before, you can just have a look at that there. It's a really high quality publication. It's a Finnish magazine with a focus on sewing, climate, culture and community. So I do actually have an article in this magazine, so I was really looking forward to receiving my copy so I could see that. It's called Craft Letters, My Favourite Sewing Tools. So if you're interested in my sewing inspiration and tools that I use and favourite brands, have a look at this article which is in Talco Magazine. One great thing about Talco Magazine that makes it stand apart from other sewing magazines is that they have a real focus on sustainability using techniques such as upcycling, reusing fabrics, zero waste techniques to make sure that we are sewing more mindfully and using those sustainable practices in our sewing. So I really like this magazine because it comes with a variety of patterns which are very size inclusive. The patterns are from bust width 31 inches to 57.5 inches so there's a good range of sizes included in there as well. There's some really good thought-provoking features in there and the photography is also absolutely stunning as well. I don't know if this comes across on the screen but the magazine is really high quality. It feels more like a book than a magazine and it's something that will really stand the test of time. It's a great investment if you do enjoy the patterns that they have in each issue. So today I thought I'd go through a few of the patterns and just to give you a bit of an overview of what's included in the magazine. It is a bit of an investment so it's £22 to buy and it comes as a paper copy although I think you can now also get a digital copy in the magazine as a bundle and that includes the PDF versions of the patterns. So the patterns in this magazine, they, it does come with full size paper pieces and there's four pages here which are of A0 size and if you look at the pattern pieces they all overlap so this is quite common in if you buy Fiber Mood magazine or any other Japanese patterns for example all the pattern pieces do overlap and when you actually choose your pattern it will tell you which page you need for your pattern tracing and then you just follow the markings for the size that you want to make. If you do have a lot of pattern pieces to trace or you don't enjoy tracing, then the PDF option is available. You can buy some of the patterns individually, but it would obviously come to a little bit more than just buying the magazine. The magazine for 22 pounds, you're getting quite a number of patterns in there, so it is good value. The patterns vary from really simple ones with two or three pieces to much more involved makes. So if we start at the beginning with all the patterns, the first one is called Tata and it's a dress and it's based on a zero waste pattern design. You actually only need one pattern piece for this, so if you are really not keen on tracing, this is probably a good one to start with because you actually only need one piece. And the whole construction is based on that one piece of fabric with gathering and a elasticated jersey panel in the center. And you can choose to either gather the sleeves or to leave them loose. And I think this would be a great one for drapey fabrics. Uh, you could make a patchwork version or color block version. And uh, it looks like a really nice breezy style for some time as well. The next one is called Aurora and it's a apron style sundress. And you can layer it with a shirt as they've shown here. You can also just wear it on its own as a summer sundress as well. The picnic dress has some really interesting shaping. It's got some ruching and if you have a look at how the skirt falls, it's a really unusual style. It kind of has a sculptural look to it. This one you can make with the sleeves or without the sleeves and it has a zip down the back as well. That would be a really nice one if you just want to try something really different with unusual construction. It's got a curved area in the back panel. I'm not sure whether I would make this one just because of the length. It would be a bit difficult to adjust the length to be suitable for what I would wear myself but I can see that being a really cool piece. It reminds me of the kinds of dresses you could get in All Saints, if you know that shop, so that kind of style, just a bit edgy and different. The next one is called Ori, and it's a jacket. It comes with two options. You can have a short sleeve jacket with a ruffle inserted in the seam lines or a longer length, more classic jacket shape. Again, it has got these really beautiful 
curved style lines in there. And the photography in this one is amazing. If you look at that amazing hat that the model's wearing and the backdrop, I think that's really unusual and beautiful as well. I actually really like this pattern because these curved seam lines just give it a really different look. And I think it just elevates the style of a quite basic jacket to something being a little bit unusual. And again, you could play around with color blocking as they have done with the shorter version here or you can just keep it really simple and classic with just one block colour as well. The Pina dress is another quite classic design. It has a zip down the back and the samples are quite drapey pieces. Could be nice for even for nightwear or for evening wear. There's a longer version and a shorter version as well. And this one is a fully lined piece, so you can really make a, a very well finished garment with this one. That's another really nice design and I like both options. The, the longer version here has got a tie option on the armholes. I actually have a couple of silks that would be perfect for this. I've got a buttercup yellow silk and a lilac one. For the lilac one I also bought an organza from Fabric Godmother. It's got lilac and embroidered flowers on it and I think that would be really nice as an overlay over the satin for the top half of this dress. The Felix is a simple smock style pattern. It's a really wearable style. You could actually just use this for gardening or for crafting. You could probably make this in a canvas or a denim or a twill and it'd be really useful to just store lots of things in those big pockets. And I think in terms of pattern pieces, that would again be quite a simple one. This next pattern is called Leia. I think that's pronounced correctly. It's a Finnish name for Kite. And it's one that was designed by one of the co-founders of Taco Magazine. It's got quite an unusual shape. There's some really big sort of billowing pieces which actually are pockets. So they form some really roomy pockets there. And, and it's quite a playful design. I'm not sure how I would wear this one particularly, but it is like a really interesting construction and be really fun to make. So that's one to look out for if you like slightly unusual pieces. Prism is a robe. The construction of this is really interesting because it's just got one main piece and the shaping is provided by the drawstring. So the drawstring goes over the shoulder area and across the back and you can tighten it as much as you want to. And there's a couple of variations here again, the short and long version, and you can either make it with patch pockets or with inseam pockets, or you can just miss out the pockets altogether. If you made it without pockets, there's very few pieces that you need really, just one for over the shoulder and then the main body of the, the fabric and the drawstring. You could make this in a really nice lightweight foil or even a silk would be really nice in this, and you could just use it to layer over other clothes just to elevate them a little bit. This was the one that caught my eye, which is April. It's a simple jacket, just a padded, lightweight jacket. You only actually need a few pieces for this because it's just a really simple jacket. It doesn't have a lining and you just finish it with bias tape. And I actually already have two pieces of this Nanny Eero double gauze quilted fabric, which I've just been hoarding in my stash for a few months now. So I definitely think I should make one of these with at least one of those fabrics. They're just really oversized. You just wear them over a dress or over jeans and it looks very cozy, but also with the prints of the Nanny Eero fabric, they will look really amazing as well. They give some suggestions for how to finish this with a really neat look like hand sewing the bias binding in place. Now we've got another bonus surprise. I don't actually know if Juliet knows about this, but Juliet is also in the book. So my friend Juliet Uzor also has a, a YouTube channel and Instagram. I didn't know that she was gonna be in here, but there's a nice review of her book, which is called, You Will Be Able To Sew Your Own Clothes By The End Of The Book. The last design is called Sasha. It's got quite a worker or boiler suit type feel to it. And I really like the both the versions actually. So one is with a really bright, colorful twill or canvas. And the other is just a very simple, natural colored twill. I probably would make this in a block color, I think, to start with. And just to make it really wearable, maybe a bright print. It reminds me of the LF Marquee boiler suits, if you know that brand and it does have a 10 year old size so that's perfect for my daughter so i might give that a trial though she had a look at it and she wasn't too sure whether she would actually want to wear it but i think once you wear something like this it's just so practical and comfortable that you just tend to reach for them quite often 
So that's all of the patterns in the book and I hope you've enjoyed that little walkthrough of the magazine. I have got a copy of Taco Magazine which was issue one. I've made a few of their patterns ahead of publication. So I've made the Helmy blouse before and the Regina trousers and both those I wear really regularly. For those patterns I actually use the PDF versions just because it was quicker and easier for me to use a PDF but I'm trying to overcome my reluctance of tracing because I think tracing is actually such a economical and mindful way of creating your pattern. It's just a more slow process and I feel that sometimes we are in a bit too much of a hurry to sew our garment and just slowing down that process can actually be a really interesting part of the experience as well. I have actually traced patterns in the past so I used to use Japanese patterns quite regularly when I first started sewing and for those patterns you actually you have to trace them using the pattern pieces very similar to this process. It's not something I enjoy particularly but I think it's a really useful skill to to have and to and I do want to overcome that. I'd be interested to know if you regularly trace patterns if you use magazines such as Burda Style or Fibre Mood whether you regularly trace your patterns whether you enjoy that part of the process and whether you have any tips for speeding up that part of the sewing project as well. I also just want to say thank you so much to everyone who commented and subscribed following my first videos. That was the very first time I ever posted on YouTube. It's been really nice to be warmly welcomed to YouTube. I'm really excited to create more videos and I've got lots of ideas. So thank you for being here and for encouraging me and please do subscribe if you're new here. Thanks for watching and see you next time.